we're still working on our fox. I think this is about the fifth video, maybe. <laughs> um, but anyway, if you've stumbled upon the video and you're like, what's happening? Um, we're making a fox. And if you want to follow along, you need to do two things. You need to go to Serafina Fiber Art on Etsy and get your fox kit, which doesn't look like this because I've been using it, but it has everything you need. And, um, and go back and watch the previous videos. In this video, we are going to put the top coat on the tail and the pelt on the back. Okay, so this is one of my favorite parts of making a fox. I'm going to put him over here for a moment. Um, use, using some of the nice um, carded sort of multicolor chestnut, you're going to try and grab like a nice wide sort of swath of it. It's not super thick. It's thinned out a little. It's about three inches wide and four inches long. And I'm just going to tug it gently just to lengthen it a little bit. We want this to be sort of on the thin side, not a ton of wool. So this is going to become cover the tail. And what's going to happen is we're going to take it and we're going to hold it like this and we're just going to gently wrap it down the tail, leaving it nice and poofy and loose. But I want to get some color variation on it before I do that. And if you do the color variation on your surface before you put it on to your animal, no matter what you're making, you can kind of um, be a little looser and more playful with it and it'll end up looking more natural than if you try to, you know, stab after you've got it built. Oh, I want to add some black and try to put the black on there. But if we do it this way, I'm going to take the black um, and I'm actually going to go ahead and hand blend a little bit of the black with the chestnut just so it's not quite such a um, defined black stripe. I'm going to put some black near one side which will end up being the base of the tail and you could put some gray in there as well. They often have, um, I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to pull the length that I want and then I'm going to pull a small section off of that. So there's a couple of colors in your kit that you can kind of play with. Put some gray in and then I'm going to take even more chestnut and just kind of lay that over just a little bit. Okay. So I've got this laid out. I'm just going to stab it a little bit so that things use the punch tool. Um, stay where I want them to. Not too much. Okay, I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to start near the body and just gently wind down the tail, ending near the white tip. And then I'm going to stab that on without stabbing the life out of it. You kind of want a little bit of that poofiness. You want his tail to look nice and full. And this is a fun way to do it without actually trying to apply fibers that stick off. Okay, and then I'm going to put a little bit more white on the tip of his tail just to kind of even up the thickness and blend into that gray just by wrapping it loosely around and then stab that. Okay, next we'll make the pelt. Okay, we're going to lay out some um, chestnut and um, a little bit of gray to make a pelt for the fox. So I kind of do it like I did the tail. I take a nice sort of even piece and stack it up. So the pelt is going to go from the neck to the tail. Um, so you want it to be from here. We're laying horizontally on our surface. From here to here, you want about that distance. And from side to side, 
You don't want it super long because then you're going to have all this fiber hanging down to the ground that you have to deal with. So keep it, um, oh, that's actually a good measurement, about the width of your hand. You know, it can stick out a little bit on each side, but you don't want it to be too much wider than that. Um, often foxes gray a little towards their hind end, so um, I'm going to take some of the gray and just lay it on the hind end, and then I'm going to take a little bit more chestnut and just lay it thinly over that to blend in. And then we're going to felt this on our surface. This is a good um, application for the punch tool because it has five finer needles that um, that felt flat very well without over being over sticking. Then you take this and you just lay it over his back. And you let it come down onto his top of his leg a little bit. And then it's up to you whether you want to leave this unfinished or really felt a strong, you know, line there where the white and chestnut meet. That's just kind of a matter of style and I usually start by making sure that it's centered on his back and I go down the middle of his back just to make sure that it's not going to shift around on me and then I put him down and I come from the sides. And like I said, where this these two colors meet, um, you can kind of define it with your felting needle a little bit. Or you can just leave it leave it shaggy. I'll do one side each way so you can kind of see. Well, I will work on this more off camera but so this is a side that you you know I kind of defined it more and this is a side where I left it a little more fluffy so just keep working on that getting it on there and next we are going to work on his head so thanks for joining me um, next time we're going to start to sculpt his little uh, foxy face we got to make some ghost shapes for his muzzle and some triangles for his ears and um, it'll be a piece of cake. I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.